Kruskal's algorithm is a defined way by which you can derive the minimum spanning tree from a given weighted graph. It relies basically on the fact that when you are picking nodes and edges, you do not form a cycle in the graph. And that is the underlying concept. So based upon that, let's see what we can do about it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First of all, we are going to take a familiar example of a graph and then its minimum spanning tree. Going forward, we will use the Kruskal's algorithm step by step to see how you can actually derive that minimum spanning tree. And then, as usual, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can understand and visualize how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. Let us say you are given this sample weighted graph and you have to find out its minimum spanning tree. So, how do you do that? Well, one particular way is that you find out all the different spanning trees possible and then find out the weight associated with each of the particular example, right? You find out that, okay, this is the minimum weight possible. So this is your minimum spanning tree, right? That is certainly one way. And it is often the brute force way. And nobody likes a brute force method, right? It will take up a lot of time and a lot of your resources. So certainly we need a better way how you can efficiently find out the minimum spanning tree. So basically there are two major algorithms that you want to know about. The Prim's algorithm and the Kruskal's algorithm. The Prim's algorithm, I have covered it in a separate video. So in this video, we will just focus on the Kruskal's algorithm. And once again, it works on the greedy approach. The major difference is that in Prim's algorithm, we start from the vertices and then cover all the edges. Whereas in a Kruskal's algorithm, we are greedy with all the edges. So how do you do that? Let us say I have this graph, right? And we will take the help of two more data structures. One is a priority queue and one is a set. So in a priority queue, what basically happens is when I am adding elements, they get sorted in an ascending order automatically. So it guarantees that whenever I'm popping out an element from my queue, I will always get the minimum element. So what we will do is we will utilize this priority queue to store all of our edges. And I am guaranteed that whenever I pick out an edge, I will get the minimum edge that is possible. And we are going to use this set to keep a track of that. Hey, these are the nodes that we have already covered. So let us now try to proceed ahead. The first step that we do in a Kruskal's algorithm is we take all the edges that we have and we will add it to our priority queue, right? So what I just did is I added all of these edges to my priority queue. And in this priority queue, they are all sorted by the weight of all of these edges, right? You can see all of these edges right over here. And each edge, it has the information about the source and destination as well. Correct? That is how you define the edge structure, right? Now your setup is complete. What you do in a Kruskal's algorithm is you start to pop from your queue. And as soon as you're popping, what do you get? The first thing that you pop is this edge. And what edge you are referring to? You are referring to this particular edge. So I am going to take this edge and it is now a part of your minimum spanning tree. At the same time, what does this edge do? This edge is covering two of the nodes as well, right? You covered nodes five and node two. So I'm going to write down node five and node two over here. So now I know that I have covered these two nodes. This will help me to remove all the redundancy. You will understand it. Just give it a little while. I am now done with this particular edge, right? Now look at the second edge that you have. The second edge is this particular edge one, right? So you pop it out. And which nodes is this edge covering? It is covering node five and node seven. You check, have you visited these nodes? You see that you have already visited node five but you haven't visited node seven. 
That means you can include this edge in your minimum spanning tree. I included this edge and I'm also visiting node number seven. So this is what is happening. All the edges in the green, they are a part of my minimum spanning tree. And in this set, I am keeping a track of all the nodes that I have already pivoted. Just keep repeating this process now. What is the next edge that you have? You have this edge too, right? And this is this particular edge, correct? This edge is covering nodes two and node one. You have already visited node two, but you haven't visited node one, right? So I can safely include this edge as well in my minimum spanning tree. So this is how you're going to proceed. Just follow the same steps once again. Pop out from your queue. The next edge is edge two, and this is covering nodes four and seven. So you pop out this edge and then you have covered node seven, right? But you haven't visited node four yet. That means you can include this edge in your minimum spanning tree. Keep moving ahead now and eventually you will have the minimum spanning tree. The next edge that I have is edge three and this edge is this particular edge. Now notice what nodes is this edge connecting? It is connecting node one and node five. Look in your set. You have already covered node five over here and node one over here. So if I will add this edge, this will be simply redundant, right? So you don't have to add it. You will simply pop it out and don't do any operation. Now move ahead. The next edge that you have is edge with the weight four. You are connecting nodes two and three with this edge. You have already covered two, but you haven't covered node three, right? So I am going to include this edge in my minimum spanning tree. This is now done and we can move ahead. Look at the next edge that we have. I have the edge with the weight five. And what about this edge? If you notice, I have already covered nodes one and three, and I can verify this information from my set. So don't do any operation and just pop it out. Look at the next edge now. It is edge seven. Once again, you have already covered nodes three and seven. So don't do anything. You pop it out. Look at the next edge. That is eight. You have already covered node three and node four. So don't do anything. What is the edge that you're remaining with? You are remaining with edge number nine, right? And if you pick it, you have visited node five, but you haven't visited node six. So you are going to include this edge in your minimum spanning tree. You are now done with all the edges and your priority queue is completely empty. As soon as your queue is empty, this is where you stop. And look at all the edges now. All of these edges in the green, they are representing your minimum spanning tree. If you remember, this was the solution that we had, right? And if you want to derive this, just remove all of these redundant edges. You get the same minimum spanning tree, right? And that is it. This is the Kruskal's algorithm. Once again, we took the advantage of a greedy approach. We were greedy about the edge weight. So we kept on choosing the edges with the minimum weight and that eventually led us to the most optimized solution and the minimum spanning tree. Now, let us quickly do a dry run of the code and see how it works in action. On the left side of your screen, you will have the actual code to implement the Kruskal's minimum spanning tree. And on the right, I have this sample graph in front of me, which is passed in as an input parameter to the function. This time a smaller graph for better understanding. So what is the first thing that we do? First of all, we will create a priority queue. And this priority queue is gonna store all of my edges, right? which we will iterate one by one. And as soon as I create this priority queue, what will I do? I will add all of these edges to it. And since it is a priority queue, all of these edges will get added in the ascending order of their weights. All of my edges have been added over here, correct? And to proceed ahead, the next thing I do is I will create a list of all the edges that are a part of the minimum spanning tree. That is what we have to return, correct? Now, for the next step, you also create a set to store all of the nodes that you have already pivoted. So, 
I will create a set and this set is gonna store that hey, I have already visited these nodes. It will come in very handy. Now comes the interesting part. What you do is you start a while loop until your priority queue is completely empty because that is where you have to stop. The first thing that we do is you try to pull an edge from the priority queue. Polling simply means popping. So in my first step, I get an edge. So I am talking about this particular edge. Once I get an edge, look at the source and destination. So I get my source and destination of the current edge and then I check. Have I covered both of these source and destinations in my set, right? If both of these are in the set, that means I don't have to include this edge. So I will just continue. But right now, neither two, neither one. They are not in my set, right? So I will add both of these edges to my set as well. Both of these edges get added and this particular edge, this will be a part of my minimum spanning tree. So I add this edge to my MFT edges, right? Now we are done. So what we'll do? We will run the while loop once again. And this time the next edge is going to pop out. So this next edge is covering nodes three and four. So once again, you repeat the same process. You check in your set. If you haven't covered the nodes, add them and then you proceed ahead. So once this loop is complete, your queue will be completely empty. And at the end, you will have a list of all the edges that is computing your minimum spanning tree. The time complexity of this particular solution is order of E, where E is the total number of edges in your graph. Because in the worst case, you might have to go over all the possible edges, correct? And the space complexity of this solution is also order of E. Because in the worst case, you need a priority queue to store all of your edges, right? I hope now you have a better understanding about the Kruskal's algorithm. As for my final thoughts, I just want to say that a minimum spanning tree is a very important concept when it comes to graph data structures because it helps to eliminate all of the redundancy. You can remove all of the edges, find smaller networks and whatnot. So it is always a good idea that you do remember the Kruskal's algorithm. A better way to solidify this concept is that you create some examples for yourself on a piece of paper and then apply the Kruskal's algorithm on your own. Don't do any code. So that will help you make understand that, hey, this is how the algorithm is actually working internally. And trust me, it will help you a lot. So while going throughout the video, did you face any problems? Or do you find any other methods by which you can implement the Kruskal's algorithm even efficiently? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of it with you. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also, a huge shout out to all the members who support my channel. You guys really keep me going. And as a member, you do get priority reply to your comments as well. Stay tuned for my upcoming videos on the graph data structure. Until then, see ya.